Welcome to Easy Way to Physics with Jaya. Today we will continue refraction. See basic physics, grade 10, chapter 10, light, part 7. Here we will discuss about some application level questions. Also, a comparison study of refraction through glass lab and glass prism, lateral displacement, angle of deviation, and some numerical problems. This is your channel. Please subscribe and tap the bell button to get the notifications of new topics. In the previous video, we learned about refraction, loss of refraction, refractive index, absolute refractive index and principle of reversibility of light. If you did not learn that, please go to that video and then come back to this. The change in the path of light when a ray of light enters from one medium to another medium is known as refraction. Here, in the case of glass lab, the light ray enters from air to glass in the first phase. That means from rarer to denser medium. And the ray of light bends towards the normal. Then, in the second phase, when it is coming out of glass, it enters from denser medium to the rarer medium, from glass to air. And the ray of light bends away from the normal. Here, angle of incidence is represented by small letter i, angle of refraction by small letter r, and angle of emergence by small letter e. And angle of incidence and angle of emergence will always be equal. Or we can say angle I is equal to angle E. The angle of incidence will be equal to the angle of emergence always. But the incident ray will not be in the same line of the emergent ray. The incident ray and emergent ray will be parallel to each other. We say the incident ray is laterally displaced. It is displaced to the sideways. The shifting of emergent ray sideways from the direction of the original incident ray is called lateral displacement or lateral shift. And this is the definition for lateral displacement also. Once again, the shifting of the emergent ray sideways from the direction of the original incident ray is called lateral displacement or lateral shift. In the given diagram, PQ, that width PQ is known as the lateral displacement. If the ray of light falls perpendicularly on the surface, that means along the direction of the normal. In that case, the angle of incidence is zero and the incident ray is normal to the interface and the ray of light continue without bending or does not undergo any refraction. Slanting rays of light is falling on glass lab as well as on glass prism. Both the cases the rays of light undergo refraction. But in the case of glass prism, we can see the seven colors. The light is splitting into seven different colors. What is the uh, reason behind it? This is due to the difference in geometrical shapes of the uh, glass lab and glass prism. The opposite sides are parallel in the case of glass lab, whereas in the case of glass prism, it is not at all parallel. The emergent ray undergo lateral displacement in the case of glass lab, whereas in the case of glass prism, the emergent ray undergo an angle of deviation. Then dispersion takes place. This person means you know it is the splitting of white light into seven different colors. Then dispersion takes place in the case of glass prism, whereas in the case of glass lab, the dispersion is not visible. These are some commonly asked questions on refraction. First one, a coin kept in a glass tumbler filled with water appeared to be raised above its actual position. Why? Answer, when the coin is kept under water, the rays of light coming from the coin undergo refraction on reaching the surface of water. That means the interface of water and 
air and it bent away from the normal. Since it is coming from a denser medium to rarer medium, the rays of light bends away from the normal. It appears as if the light rays are coming from a point slightly above the bottom of the tumbler. And a virtual image of the coin is formed. So we see actually the virtual image, not the real coin. That's why it is appear raised from the normal position. Here some more questions are given. Question number one. When a thick glass lab is placed over some printed matter, the letters appear raised when viewed through glass lab. Why does it happen? Second question, a lemon kept in the water in a glass tumbler appear to be bigger than its actual size when viewed from the sides. Why? Question number three, the bottom of a tank or pond filled with water appears to be raised. Why? There are three questions but answer is the same. Answer, rays coming from the printed letters, lemon or bottom of the tank. We can use any appropriate word there. Undergoes refraction at the interface of water and air and bends away from the normal. It appears as if the light rays are coming from a point slightly above the actual point and a virtual image is formed. That is why the bottom of the tank appears to be raised or the lemon appears to be bigger or the printed letters appear to be raised or bigger in size. Refractive index of diamond is 2.42. What does it mean? You may get similar questions on any other medium also. Answer. Refractive index of diamond is equal to velocity of light in air divided by velocity of light in diamond. Here it is given as 2.42. So on cross multiplying what we get, velocity of light in diamond is equal to velocity of light in air divided by 2.42. That is, velocity of light in diamond is equal to 1 divided by 2.42 into the velocity of light in air. Or the velocity of light in diamond is 1 by 2.42 times the velocity of light in air. This is the answer. Study the given table and answer the given question. This is your textbook question itself. Find out the medium having the highest and lowest optical density. So go through the values of refractive index given in the table. Based on that, you have to write the answer. Answer is, if refractive index is more, its optical density will be higher than the other medium. Here, the highest refractive index is for diamond, so the optical density is also highest for diamond. And the refractive index and optical density is lowest for air. You are given kerosene, turpentine and water. In which of these does the light travels the fastest? Answer. If refractive index is more, its optical density will be higher. If optical density is higher, the speed of light will be less in that medium. This is a general point you have to remember. And based on this, on comparing the refractive indices, we will get the answer. Here, the refractive index of water is 1.33, kerosene is 1.44 and turpentine 1.47. Therefore, the speed of light is highest in water. The least refractive index is for water. So, speed is highest in water, less in kerosene and the least in turpentine. Next is a numerical problem. The refractive index of water with respect to vacuum is 4 by 3 and refractive index of vacuum with respect to glass is 2 by 3. If the speed of light in glass is 2 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second, find the speed of light in vacuum and in water. So two answers we have to find out. Whenever we get a numerical problem, there is some proper method to solve it. 
So for that first we have to do is write down the given things in the question in the answer sheet. Then what is to be found out that we have to write down. Then write the appropriate formula which formula we have to select and write it. Then start substituting values and solve it. So here the refractive index of water with respect to vacuum is given as 4 by 3. We represent it by NWV. And refractive index of vacuum with respect to glass is NVG is equal to 2 by 3. Speed of light in glass is given 2 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second. Now which uh, equation we will find out? NVG is equal to speed of light in glass divided by speed of light in vacuum. That is equal to 2 by 3. So speed of light in glass is given 2 into 10 to the power of 8. On cross multiplying we will get speed of light in vacuum as 3 into 2 into 10 to the power of 8 divided by 2 is equal to 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second. And this value we will substitute in the second equation. That is NWV is equal to speed of light in vacuum divided by speed of light in water. That is the second part of the question. So on cross multiplying we will get 4 by 3 is equal to 3 into 10 to the power of 8 divided by speed of light in water. That is Speed of light in water is equal to 3 into 10 to the power of 8 into 3 the whole divided by 4 or the answer we get it as 9 by 4 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second. So we get both the answers. Hope you understood the topic well. If you have any doubt enter it in the comment box. Give your suggestions also. And if you did not subscribe the channel, please subscribe and tap the bell button also. Don't forget to share with your friends. Okay. Thank you.